Ladies and gentlemen, artists and creatives, my name is Forrest and I'd like to welcome you to Tribal Sounds where we cover all things creative in audio, photo, and video. I'd like to say thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing to the channel since the last video that we did with Jim Ebert and Cancer Can Rock. Um, the subscribers went from 70s in the mid 70s all the way to early 200s. So I would like to say welcome to everybody who has joined recently. To formally introduce myself, my name is Forrest and I am a creative entrepreneur and have dabbled in music since I was very, very young. And that's all facets of music. I'm a guitar player. I am a songwriter a lyricist, just all of it. I love every single piece of music and I've tried to learn multiple instruments through my life and in songwriting and in production. And now I spend some of my time working with other artists and consulting and other business professionals who need work for photography and video. That's me in a nutshell. I just wanted to say thank you for being here. I wanted to say I appreciate you. Today what we're gonna focus on is songwriting. There's multiple phases of songwriting and a lot of people are unaware. They just kind of go blindly walking around around waiting for the rain to pour, so to speak. Inspiration doesn't just happen like that. There's a quote about inspiration that I'll, I'll splash across the screen here and it'll make it look cool because I can't remember it now. But inspiration is, is definitely something that is trained for. It's something that you have to cultivate and nurture early on in your songwriting career to, to make life easier for yourself later on. Now you can still do these things later on, but in my experience, songwriters generally get stuck in their ways, so to speak, and it's a little bit harder to untrain the way that you might be used to doing something. If you are a young songwriter, this video is especially for you, and uh, we're gonna focus today on the pre-production phase of songwriting. What is pre-production? So the pre-production phases of writing a song are similar to how a director of photography would work in video, going shot by shot and visualizing what the end message may be. Now there's close-up shots, there's wide-angle shots, there's medium, there's portrait-style shots. So that's what a director of photography would think about whenever they're going to film a video or a photographer would think about before he goes to a photography session. A similar thing can be done in songwriting. So one of the things I like to do is I like to start with a memory box or an inspiration box. So this can be a shoe box, it can be a literal, it could be an apple box, it could be any kind of box that you can hold ideas, thoughts, things that help fuel your inspiration. Starting with magazine pages. Just I'll, I'll flip through magazines that I, I naturally read anyways and if I see a story or if I see a photograph or if I see an advertisement in the in the illustrations I'll, I'll rip it out and I'll put it inside the box and it's flat, it just lays in the bottom of the shoe box and I set it aside so I can come back to it later. If you can visualize the idea of what you have or if there's like just a thought, a spark, just a, a moment where a moment where inspiration does hit and maybe it's just the simplest thing. It could be a single word, it could be a title, it could just be a melody that you're humming and if you can hold on to that idea and take it and run with it and just go. The main objective is to just go. So at that point, it's important to go ahead and write down, brainstorm anything, jot it down on paper, jot it down save it for later. Save it for the rainy day because that moment of inspiration is like pure gold. Uh, you want to take that idea. So let's just say I'm, I'm looking around the woods now. Let me see. Like, let's just say da 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 Sounds a little bit woodlandy. So I would take that melody. I would take that idea and then I would set it aside. I would say, what does that remind me of? Maybe it reminds me, what colors do I see in, in the woods here? I see green, what is green? Green is envy, green is jealousy, green is life. Take that one color and translate it multiple different ways. Now, all of a sudden, this da 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 well, maybe I could sing just about anything, but I'd rather sing about you. So now we're developing things and we got an idea of what's happening around us. We got an idea of the color. We got an idea of direction. We don't even know if the direction is right yet. It's okay because the pre-production phases of a songwriting experiment or a songwriting session begin this way. 
So take that idea, run with it, use word associations, look at the things around you, pick up magazines, rip out pages, put them in a memory box or an inspiration box rather. Keep collecting little pieces of ammunition for that song. And that is going to be where you're gonna pull from in the future if you have to take a break. Pre-production, uh, it begins with an idea, it goes into a little bit of building, it goes into a, a little bit of tug of war with kind of like, do I want it to go this way? Do I want it to go that way? What do I actually want from this song? These are the questions you'll want to ask yourself early in this songwriting session. So the next phase of pre-production would be to idealize the, the missing pieces. So if it did start out as a da 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 now I would go into my digital audio workstation. I might hammer out some chords that go along with that or maybe I strum my guitar and I just come up with a couple of different chord progressions. Now at this stage, don't be afraid to borrow, steal, just go and grab some chord progressions that are in line with what your emotion is. So earlier we were saying that it could be about jealousy, like what chord sounds like jealousy? These are questions to ask yourself during the pre-production phase. It's important to play and learn and just develop and keep moving forward. That is what we're ultimately trying to do is just keep the rhythm moving forward. We want the song to be out of our head. So we're, we're getting it to this point. We've got, we've got our idea box that's been developing. We've got a couple of chords now and we're gonna, start, we're gonna start rough drafting a song. And we take that motif, that melody at the beginning and we can build up on that. So in the pre-production stages, this is how I handle it. I come up with the idea. I flesh out just the first couple pieces. Just the first, like it could be just the idea, the melody, the lyrics, the motif of it. And then I put it over top of chords and those chords might not be what I end up with at the end at all, but I'll start to build this song. I'll make eight bars, 16 bars of just a single chord progression that might go from, I don't know, let's just say, uh, let's go E minor, F sharp over D, G to a C major seven. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty regularly used progression. We strum them, we fill them out, and we just, freestyle just like a hip-hop lyricist would freestyle over a beat we're gonna freestyle words doesn't have to be sung doesn't have to be the perfect melody don't feel any shame at this point because we are brainstorming we're developing the song pre-production and i can't stress this enough pre-production of a song will make your songs a thousand times better because you will learn to not have fear to try something new you you'll just always have an endless array of inspiration because once you once you get in the habit of doing this once you get in the habit of taking this this idea and then moving it over here and then just formulating what it is you're trying to say, it'll allow you to say it better. Now that we've got our song developed to this point, we have like maybe eight to 16 bars of it, and it's a verse, or maybe it's just the chorus. Maybe we got a really tight chorus. And now we can, we can rely on principles of music to help us further nurture the song to fruition quicker. You might use call and response at this stage to to transition or to close a statement of lyrics. So I was in love with her, but she had eyes for another guy. The sky screamed and angels, they did cry. That's like, we're just making up lyrics. We're making up words and we tie those words in either in the word form or in the musical form so that we can get to the next stage. Now we're gonna transition into the part B or section A, whichever way you decide to work. There's no right or wrong way. Some people start with a bridge. You wanna start using these and then go back to the principles of music. So call and response. Make a sound and answer the sound. Make a sound and answer. Very, very fundamental stuff in music. Very, very fundamental ideas. You want to start here, develop these small ideas, build up on what is proven, call and response works. Try out a couple of different rhythms, maybe like a ba ta 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 ta. So, and da 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 da, or da 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 da. Take the rhythm, add your melody to it, try out a few different things, and keep on moving this train forward. Because you can get this idea out into the, into the idea box, inspiration box, whatever you want to call it. 
you can then grab a few chords that help you build the song and then you can tie it in together with something that is as simple as the blues, simple call and response. So now we're here in the middle of the stages and this is pre-production. If you can't tell, I love this stage. This is probably my favorite part of all music is just the, the idea phase of what could be because right now we are painting on silence. We are taking absolutely nothing and creating something. This is the most powerful emotion I've ever felt in my life. And I think that you also will feel this kind of emotion. Yeah, you've got your idea box, you've got everything formulated, you're building the song, you're moving it forward. If you need to take a break, take a break. It isn't called writer's block. Never think of anything in pre-production as writer's block because there is nothing but possibilities in front of you. If you don't like the course you're on, scrap it, start back at the idea box where the inspiration originally began and then carry it forward. Just take it with you, go forward with it. So yeah, don't be afraid of writer's block in the pre-production stage, it's the most amazing stage of the songwriting journey. Now, I'm gonna make a couple follow-up videos detailing more about what phases we go into after we get done with our pre-production. Be sure to stick around until the end and I'll kind of outline those. So you have your song. If there's something you're in love with, at this stage is a good time for you to go ahead and cement a couple of ideas down. That way you have a base, you have a, just how a baseball player would run around the diamond. You have a first base, a second base, a third base, and then home run. After you have those ideas done and you've, you've recorded it hopefully onto either your, your computer or your cell phone, just whatever you may have laying around, go ahead and leave it. Even if you feel the desire to keep driving, it's a good idea at this stage whenever you have a few ideas cemented down in the pre-production process to, to rest on it. The next day you'll have new ears, you'll have a new mind, and it, you may or may not really enjoy those things again. And if you do, it's a good sign you're on to slash forward. Let's say you've finally idealed a song. You've you're idealized the song, rather. <clears throat> so we're, we're in the future now. We've got our song, we've got it fleshed out. Now you can start imagining what kind of instrumentation might be with that song. And maybe you're just a singer-songwriter, which is completely fine. Maybe it's just a guitar and vocal song. Or maybe it's a guitar and vocal song with natural ambience in the background. Now you can start really painting the picture in its entirety. You've got words, you've got music, You've applied a basic set of principles to what music is and how it's delivered with call and response or a rhyme scheme or motifs, anything that might be going to, to drive this vessel. At this stage, start imagining what other pieces of music, what other orchestrations may be intertwined with it because this is a great way to know what you're going to get into in the next phase, which is the tracking stage. This is my challenge to you. The next time you think of an idea of a song, capture it. Capture it in that moment. Either jot it into your phone, write it on a napkin, do whatever, but take it home and add it to this idea box. And I want to see how many of you are able to get through this pre-production stage, maybe even working with each of you if, you. if you reach out to me in the comments, like let me know and I'd be happy to help guide you through the next stages of this because it's only gonna get more fun because once you have the vision, once you have the idea, once it's no longer an intangible object that you keep waiting for to rain from the clouds or come from the heavens, once you're able to identify that, then you will be able to really flourish as a songwriter. I want to see a world where art can thrive, and I think that what I can do is try my best to provide my perspective. If I'm able to convey and show you guys what my processes are, I think that it may help you in your own endeavors. So I'll leave you with this. There is no such thing as writer's block. I left writer's block a long time ago and I will never return back to thinking that it exists. So the next video in this songwriting series will be about the tracking session. So we won't be in the beautiful outdoors like it was so wonderful to get out to into today, but we will be working on tracking music and we'll talk about how we can go about doing that to better serve you in the songwriting process as well. 
I'd like to say thank you to all of the new subscribers who have joined in since our last video with Jim Ebert. If you hadn't checked that video out, please do so. Show us some love. Uh, Jim is a wonderful guy. He's worked with phenomenal A-class artists, and I learned so much in my time with him. I'm looking forward to making more content moving forward and sharing my visions with you all and I hope that each of you can find some value in it. If you do, please be sure to share, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you feel compelled to do. And my name is Forrest. I'd like to thank you for being a part of Tribal Sounds. Peace.